Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about Twitter monitors. We're going to go over why you're going to want one, how you can get one, and then finally I'm going to cap it all off. If you want to build your own, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in Python. Stick around. Alright, so there's a few things I want to go over regarding why you actually want to get one of these Twitter monitors. So, first of all, they're really good for getting bots possible to get bots for free on Twitter and uh, a lot of the big companies will do a giveaway once in a while. If you have a Twitter monitor you're gonna have a better chance at getting one of those free giveaways for a bot. Uh, another reason it's pretty good is because well it'll just help you get the bots at retail price instead of at a crazy resale price. And again this is something I also didn't know but there's a really big market in people that are just going out there trying to get a bot and then immediately flipping it for profit. So Twitter monitors can be pretty useful for both of these things. Okay, so now that we covered why you really want a Twitter monitor, let's go over how you can actually get one. And there's three main ways you can go about it. The first one is you can join a cook group. The second is that you could contract out somebody that builds Shopify monitors or other types of monitors, or maybe someone already has one up for retail and you could purchase it. And the third is that you could build one yourself. You could DIY it. So just to kind of touch on how you could join a cook group, generally with cook groups, you're gonna to wanna to get into a paid one if you're interested in monitors or any sort of service like that. So these can range anywhere from five bucks a month up to a hundred bucks a month or even more. And then the second way with contracting somebody, it could be pretty expensive because you're gonna be paying a software engineer. That, that could run up a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, honestly. Uh, and some people might have it up for retail and it may run 50 to 100 bucks a month, but if you purchase it retail, keep in mind you'll have to keep paying that monthly fee. The third way is that you could just build your own. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna show you a working Twitter monitor. It's gonna be pretty basic. It might not totally work for the long run, but with a few key tweaks, you could probably modify it and get it to work for you to at least give you a better chance at getting some of the bots. All right, guys, so we're about to jump straight into building your own Twitter monitor on Python. But first, there's something really important that I need for you to do. It's really, really important that you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I'll wait here. All right, thanks, guys. All right, so let's just jump straight into it then. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is import our packages. The only package we have for this script is TweePy or Tweepy. And this package is going to let us connect to the Twitter API. If you haven't already, make sure to pip install TweetPy. Alright, so here we're going to define our first mandatory class, which is our listener. And this is basically just going to allow us to actually connect up to the Twitter API directly. There's a couple uh, functions here that you're going to need for your class. On data, process data, and on error. Don't really need to know too much about how they work. But just know that they're very important. It's very important that you have the on error function specifically so that if any errors happen, you won't get flagged as spam by Twitter. Okay, so now we're going to define our second class, the streamer itself. And this is obviously really important. This is what's going to control who we're streaming tweets from and what kind of, if, if you want to do it by keyword, you could also do that. But this is going to set up to enable us to do all the fine control with the string. Okay, so now that we have our first two classes defined and the layout of all the tools that we need for the script to actually work, we're going to go ahead and initialize our listener class here. And this if name is main statement basically is just setting everything up so that whenever this script is executed, everything inside of the if name is main area will automatically run. Next, we're going to need to pass all the authorization identification tools and tokens into TweePy. Twitter can identify us and they know that we're not going to be spamming them out. To get your, both your API key and your API secret, make sure and head over to the Twitter developer website and sign up for a Twitter developer account. There will be a link in the description. As well, you'll also be able to get the access tokens from the website. You'll only be able to generate them once you've created your account and been approved. It doesn't take long to get approved, it took me less than 10 minutes. Now that we have everything set up and authorized with Twitter, 
it's time to pass in what accounts or keywords we're going to follow. The way I've set this up already is so that we can pass in Twitter user IDs. You can get Twitter user IDs from a website, and I'll put a link in the description, and you can pass in any Twitter user to get their unique ID. Now that we've gotten all the Twitter users passed into the script, the next thing to do is finally initialize our stream with Twitter, pass our authorization tokens, and refer back to the listening class that we already created, and then kick off the stream. Don't forget to make sure and put your own API key, API secret, access token, and access token secret in before you try to run anything. Now take a look at the software actually run. You can see that new tweets are getting populated in real time and streaming in, and they never really stop. Now I sped this up because tweets aren't happening for each user super fast. And if you look closely, you can see that inside all the data that's being sent to us, you can find the individual tweet itself, along with a bunch of other miscellaneous data. Now, there are a few caveats to this script. I think that it would be a really good idea to potentially add some text processing here. You may end up wanting to use a proxy service if you're going to try to run this hard and try to create multiple different Twitter API accounts. And as well, you'll have to obviously fill in for the users that you want to follow to talk. If, if you run a cook group or something like that, you'll have to actually use webhooks to hook this up into your Discord group. But besides that, I think this is fully functional and ready to go, and it might help some people out there to improve their chance at copying a bot for shoes. All right, guys, I really hope you liked the video today. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Let us know anything that you, what you think about the Twitter monitor. Also, there's one other important thing that I want to tell you guys. In the description below, there's going to be a link to our website where you can sign up to be on an email list so that you can stay up to date on whenever we come out with more content like this or if we're going to release something like this commercially, if you're interested in installing something like a Twitter monitor for your own cook group, just make sure and click that link, enter your email address, and you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching, guys.